Hello there. It's been a while since we did a strategy pattern video, so I think it's time for uh, a bit of a masterclass. And we are going to look at the Rui Lopez exchange ending, and you're going to learn a thing or two about the pawn structure and, and the strategy involved with the structure and how it, well, how it's transferable to to other other openings and other lines. So I'm going to show you a game. We're going to go quickly over the game. Uh, with the white pieces, we have a grandmaster, and with the black pieces, uh, I guess an amateur. He's under rated under two thousand, I believe. So let's see how the game went, and let's quickly go through it and then have your thoughts. So remember, grandmaster with white. We have the Rui Lopez, and we have the exchange. Knight g3, bishop d6, white plays d4, queen e7, kind of killing off the bishop pair, but it doesn't really matter that much. Bishop b3, knight f6, and white trades the queen. Now, black being the so-called amateur, he, he, well, happily accepts the queen trade, king e7, and white goes for more trades. What's going on here? Isn't he trying to win the game? Rook d1, bishop b6. Brings the king, it's the end game, we can, we can activate the king. Rook trade. And he offers another rook trade to what's going on. King e5, king e3, g5. Everything's equal, we have an end game. a3. It was probably too risky to take the pawn, uh, similar to Fischer's pass key. If, if you take b3 and, and then the bishop gets trapped. But okay, we trade some pawns. King e2, b3. Game goes on. I plays g4 here, it's g. And eventually, white is going to play f4 here, liquid it a little bit more. Push the pawn. Knight d2. And white actually won this game. h6. And now, because the h pawn is about to push, we can actually chop off here on c4. And yeah, then. then Bring the king in and, and and gather gather the troops. So white actually won here, you know, some some further moves, but you know the pawn is pushed and white won. So what's the takeaway? Um how did black do? Like well he he lasted for like fifty moves against the Grandmaster, so that must be a success, right? So Black was probably happy with the game. You know, I played the Grandmaster and uh, you know he really had to work for it, you know. It was a long game. And then you meet the Grandmaster after the game and you ask him, you know, what happened today? Ha! <laughs> Easiest win of the tournament. I didn't have to calculate anything. And that's the truth. White just played according to principles and strategy that has been established. And he won rather easily. Now the principle is that the end games in the Rui Lopez with these double pawns. They essentially boil down to white having a pawn majority. He has four against three, the, these three. And meanwhile, these four here on the queen side, they can't really make any headway against these three because they can't produce a pass pawn. The only way to produce a pass pawn would be if white allowed black to, uh, let's actually, let's go back here. Whoops, I uh, have it, have it in, in, in some kind of setup phase. So the only thing that could happen, so let's make it white to move. The only thing that could happen is if, if black starts to push the pawns and when we do something like this, black pushes and we bring the kings over somehow and he pushes and we do this and this and we push. You should be familiar with this breakthrough. Black can play this. And whichever way we take, he pushes the other one, and then he has a pass pawn, and he will queen. So the only thing we have to do is to, avo to avoid this. And that's, that's actually quite easy. If we go back. All the way back. Now whenever... Black starts pushing the pawns, 
and you feel like they're getting too close, you either play b3 or use what I like to call the triangle. You play a3, you, let's say he pushes something, you play c3. And with this triangle, he can never make a pass pawn. If you can get the triangle here on, on a4, b3, c4, you, even better, because it's, it's a bit higher and he can't break through. You, do, you just don't take anything. And when you take, you just take. You know, these pawns, they can't make a pass pawn. You can't make a pass pawn here. And your majority on the, on the king side is going to win. So let's look at look at some more examples. Again, the same grandmaster has the white pieces. And let's quickly just, you know, run through the moves. We have the Rui Lopez. Takes on c6. That's c3. Put d4. So he likes to trade the queens. But first, okay, this. And then knight e2. We have a queen trade. And white doesn't mind. Because he wants to trade town. Trade down, get the ending, and then win with a majority. Trades the rook, just like in the other game. Bishop d8. Okay, now we start pushing the majority. We would like to trade some more stuff, and eventually he's going to be able to do that. 97 now, we're happy to trade. Well, actually, it doesn't trade just yet, but now he trades, yeah. King e2. 95. And eventually, we're going to have more trades. Rook trade, and now we're forced to trade. We have a knight against bishop, and we still have this 4 against 3 majority. So g6, takes, takes, now we have 3 against 2. And the knight is usually better than a bishop in, in, in these kind of situations. And notice what he does. He sets up the triangle no pass pawn for black and notice that the triangle can't be hit by the bishop so these endings are usually quite quite pleasant for white and here he gets the c4 pawn so now he's already up a pawn and he can create a pass pawn actually he just mopped up stuff and yeah then we win this and then game over something like this and then yeah we don't need to see more one of my favorite players and former teammates Eduard Ro Eduardas Rosentalis he likes to play the exchange Rui Lopez, many games you can find in the database with Eduardas. He's a very strong player. So here uh, we have trades. Guess what? Trades. Rook d1. Ah, bishop c5. Trades. So, you know, the character of the position doesn't change much. Now we have more trades. Black is happy to trade, but white is also actually. King f2. 93. Okay, now he's ready for more trades. With a knight on e3, he can play, yeah, rook d1. And then bring the king. And then we just push the pawns. So the majority is going to count in the end. And notice that now we have, okay, he pushed. Let's go back a little bit. Now we have this, you know, kind of triangle. We prefer the other one. This one. But this one is equally effective. There's no way to make a pass pawn. As long as we avoid the breakthrough I showed you. Uh, the three against three. So once you push the c4, we just take, and now these, you know, 2 against 2 on the c-file will do nothing. And the knight on c3 is actually quite beautiful. And Rosenthalis was able to push through the majority on the king side. Actually, he tricked his opponent here to play h5, and then he's ready to play f5 here, and simply win this pawn. So the majority counts in the end. There's no, not going to allow knight c2, and black actually resigned now the thing is we can apply this to many situations for instance in the color con we can have this situation here uh, 94 out of six when we take and guess what we have the Rui Lopez but we just mirror it to the other side so the long-term goal would be to create a pass pawn on the uh, Queen side. I think I actually have an example game where this happens. Let's have a look at that one. So, old game where a Lothar vote has white against Gunther Möhring. Oops, uh, press something there. Uh, d4, d5, and c3 takes an f6, takes, and he takes with e pawn. Uh, I think it's called the Tartakor variation. Actually, you know, people are playing this today. Is it back to e2? And just castles. And then notice, as the game goes on, 
Bishop d3, trade. Central of the works, trade. Queen d3, trade. Trade. Bring the king. Push the majority. And then we try to make a pass pawn. Trade. Jack. Perhaps black should have taken with the king, but probably wouldn't matter much. But we just bring our king, we want to make a pass pawn. And notice, now we have this triangle on the other side. There's no breakthrough for black. And we just make the pass pawn. And then we push it. Simple strategy. You know, 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> and eventually the pass pawn counted. King here. Uh, maneuver the knight and yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. pass pawn's gonna win actually king d7 was the last move because you know if he moves here or here knight c4 and the bishop can't stop the pawn okay we can also imagine uh i think i have one more game yep i, I had a game from uh so this one is from from black side so you can apply this to many situations d4 d5 knight f3 bishop g4 what's going on here c3 takes on f3 e takes f3 okay but to get the majority we need to trade the e pawn and notice what nobody does bishop f4 he trades g3 and now e5 before white can play f4 so now after the trade even a queen trade but now we have this majority we have four against three and this majority over here is ineffective because we know how to make a triangle so, you know, get the pieces out. Knight is 7 c6, blah, blah, blah. Bishop d3, knight d4. And guess what? We have a trade. Knight f5, knight c5. Trade here. Uh, where are we here? Rook takes, knight takes. And another trade, and the knight is quite strong. And actually, he sets up kind of the high triangle here with uh, h5 and g6. I think he plays g6 at some point. Yeah, a few moves later. Now g6. He's already pushing the, you know, his maturity on the queen side. And now the knight is holding this pawn. And these pawns are not making uh, a pass pawn. So here we have this. a3, rook b2, rook e2. And yeah, this pawn is going to drop and black wins. So it's that easy. So let's have a look at uh, playing the pawn end game in practice the pawn end game is this one let's play it against the computer and see how we do from from this position okay so let's try to play against the computer we're going to play this Rui lopez pawn end game against the computer now this is excellent practice and i will leave this position for you uh, of course you can set it up yourself but i will leave the fen string which you can copy and and use on, on most sites and and, and programs and also I will leave a link to the library which you can uh, access on chess.com where I have all the positions uh, from the video so you can check that out so okay we're gonna check uh, if we can beat the computer here uh, I'm gonna bring the king we, we can also expand and, and let's just expand immediately uh, h5 let's bring the king and let's go like this and I think I'm gonna go for f5 here our goal is just to you know create the pass pawn so let's set up the triangle we talked about the triangle so let's practice what we preach okay we want to push here eventually but the triangle is also nice and remember once we have this we're not touching anything we're not touching a single thing so i think the, the majority will simply count here i can even if i want to be super fancy i can play a4 because he doesn't do anything but let's just leave the triangle I think that's the most uh, most effective way to do this. So now I think I can play e5 if he takes, king e4, and then I will push, and then head for the buffet. So here we see that the computer is basically folding. This, this is, you know, equal to just resigning. And now we just head for the pawns, pick them up, and well, we could actually we could do a lot of things, but let's just pick everything up, do this quickly, and this is great exercise. Why didn't he take the pawn? I don't know. Anyway, so we push the pawns, and and we win. So I recommend you tr you, you try for yourself. You know, try this at home. Let's make a queen, and then 
flex our uh, our queen triangle. Let's do this and this and, and this and checkmate. Uh, so this is excellent, excellent. Uh, by the way, queen queen triangle. That's another mating pattern. That's a mating pattern video. Do check it out. So you know, work on this end game. You know, play it against the computer. And get a feel for it. You know how you create. You know, try to create a pass pawn. You should be able to win against the computer. And just remember, your goal is to create a pass pawn. Give it a try. Tell me in the comments. You know how you did. And maybe if you have some problems, we, we you know we can work on them. But you know, give it a, give it a try if you want to improve. You have to, you know, take the extra step yourself. So now you have the pattern. You have a way to, to, you know, practice the pattern, work on your chess, you know, do it, and you will improve. That's why we're here. That's what the, that's what that's what this channel is for. So see you guys.